Hello class. Uh, so today we are going to look at some questions from Hamlet Act 3. Um, I have less questions from you guys than I normally do, which I'm taking as a good sign because it sounds like everybody's really understanding what they're reading. Uh, so let's get started. Abigail asks, the question I have is why does it seem like Ophelia is comfortable around Hamlet during his play? I would have thought she would be distant. She was really upset since Hamlet came over to her very abruptly in the previous act. So um, the only thing that I can say about that really is, you know, Ophelia, I think, does love Hamlet, and I think Hamlet loves Ophelia, and I do feel like she seems not completely comfortable with the situation, um, but take, you know, look at it like, look at it like a relationship that was broken off, and now you run into that person at a party, and then you get a little bit closer than you should, and it's comfortable, um, because you've been doing that, and you're used to it. Um, and that's really, I think, all that I can say about that. I don't think she seems totally comfortable, but maybe there is some relief because they miss each other or something. Uh, Mario, in Act 3, I'm curious as to what the mother will do, as well as seeing if Hamlet kills his uncle. Okay, so that's just something we're going to have to wait for going into Act 4 and 5. Kayla, the only question I have is, what is going to happen to Hamlet now that he has killed Polonius? What will Claudius do when he figures it out? Okay, so you guys are already moving into Act 4, or you should be, so you might have this question answered already. Um, the king, Claudius, is going to have Hamlet sent to England. Uh, as far as the rest, I don't want to get too far ahead because, again, right in the beginning of Act 4, you get some idea and some answers. And I want to see if, if that resonates with you. I want to see if you're able to understand uh, what it is that you're seeing. Anaheed, I have two questions. One, why can't Gertrude see the ghost? And two, Hamlet tells his mother that he is not mad and asks her to tell Claudius that Hamlet is not mad and is not crazy. Why did Gertrude tell Claudius? He... Okay, so why can't Gertrude see the ghost? So that is a very good question. Um, we know the ghost is real because we have confirmation in the first act. However, in this particular act, we don't get that same confirmation. So that's one of those things that raises the question, is the ghost really there or is Hamlet seeing things this time? Okay, so if you're following Hamlet's um, potential insanity through this, this is one of the things that gets raised a lot about whether or not this is in relation to his mental health or whether or not the ghost is making a second appearance. Now, one could argue that the ghost is making a second appearance because Hamlet is sort of off track right now when it comes to the ghost. He's not supposed to be attacking his mother. Um, and the ghost made that clear early on that he didn't want that. Now, could that be Hamlet remembering that and having an episode because of it? Could it be the ghost is really there? Um, are we seeing that moment of tenderness where the ghost really does love and miss his wife? All of those things might be true. So these are some of the things that, that, uh, are used to argue for or against Hamlet's, uh, Hamlet's sanity. Uh, the second question, Hamlet tells his mother he's not, he's not mad and she doesn't want Claudius to know. Okay. So this is another very strange telling moment about Gertrude. Uh, I always say that Gertrude is one of the most interesting characters to me because she's really hard to get a read on. Um, that moment between Hamlet and Gertrude, when that whole thing wraps up, when we get past the part that's sort of violent, it, it seems as though there's been some reconciliation between the two of them. And the second Claudius appears in the room, she throws Hamlet under the bus immediately and turns and looks at him and says, he's mad, he's mad. So again, did Gertrude really reconcile with her son in that moment? Or was she trying to make it seem that way just to safely get him out of the room because he just killed somebody? Um, again, these are things that that um, that you could use in an, in an argument about, you know, um, what role Gertrude really plays here. Uh, Shelby, my question is how come Gertrude didn't see the ghost? Okay, but the guards did. And again, I think I, I answered that a few minutes ago. Uh, Emily, one question I have is why does Hamlet treat his mom so poorly? Uh, so, you know... The one thing is you have to keep in mind Hamlet has been holding all of this in so far for the entire story. Remember, at this point, Hamlet's dad has been dead roughly two months and his mother's been remarried for about a month. Uh, so he is holding on to all of this anger and all of this, uh, all of these feelings. And this is the first time he gets alone with his mother in a room to express himself and he explodes. Um, keep in mind something else too. Hamlet, in, th in this moment 
Hamlet is the only person in the room that knows that Claudius is a murderer. He doesn't really have any confirmation one way or the other that his mother doesn't know that. Um, so all of these feelings that have been going on and building up for two months and have recently gotten worse because of seeing his father's ghost, knowing what he knows about Claudius, and now I'm sure Ophelia being not close with him is also having an effect on him. And all of that just explodes at his mother. Remember, he is not okay with this. He wasn't okay with this marriage to begin with before he knew Claudius was a murderer. So again, he he's angry with his mother's uh, choices uh, here. Um, let's see, Alec. Even though Hamlet is coming across as crazy, why is no one helping him and instead just seem to shake their head at him? So I think that early on in the play, I feel like maybe they thought they were helping him by keeping him around, um, by by asking him questions, by asking him not to go back to England. Um, maybe, maybe from Gertrude's perspective, she thought that that would be best for him to be at home where he could relax. In Claudius's perspective, Claudius has a different reason for needing Hamlet to be there. Um, but uh, I think that maybe they think they are trying to by talking to him. And, and again, everybody's got different motivations here. Gertrude's motivation for helping her son is different than Claudius's motivation. So we want to keep those things in mind. Remember, Claudius is guilty. And when you're guilty and you're carrying that guilt around, you become suspicious and paranoid of a lot of different things, even if they're irrational. Uh, Yulia, this brings me to my question. Why couldn't, couldn't Gertrude see the ghost? Okay, I talked about that earlier. We know the guards and Horatio saw him. That's a very good point. Is Hamlet's imagination or is Gertrude so shocked by Hamlet's behavior she did not notice the ghost? Again, this is up for debate, and I just talked about this a couple minutes ago. And I know that that's the big question. You know what? It should be. It should be the big question, especially when you're uh, when you're reflecting on Hamlet's sanity or potential insanity. Okay, so Cameron asks, is Hamlet all that religious? To me, it seems like he wouldn't be since he is intent on in killing his stepfather, which, if he was religious, would send him straight to hell, regardless if it was justified or not. But then he avoids killing Claudius because he does not want him to go to heaven uh, because he was asking God for forgiveness. So everybody in here, everybody involved in this is religious. Um, they also believe that there are angels and demons that can pull them in one direction or the other and that, you know, through those channels, God or Satan could be talking to them and telling them to do things. So Hamlet's father, King Hamlet, comes back and wants revenge. Um, he doesn't only want revenge because he's dead, by the way. He wants revenge, too, because Claudius killed him when he was in his sleep, which means King Hamlet died with all of his sins before he could repent. Hamlet, young Hamlet, does not want to give that courtesy to Claudius. Claudius uh, doesn't, as far as young Hamlet's concerned, certainly does not deserve that. Um, so I think in Hamlet's mind, if there is a ghost coming back and asking for revenge in this way, and it's not a demon, then this is something that maybe he perhaps should do. And even if he did do it, considering the way they believe in religion, I'm sure Hamlet feels that he could ask God for forgiveness for what he's done, and he would repent and, and maybe not get sent directly to hell for that. Uh, Julia, my burning question would be, why is Hamlet just rethinking killing Claudius and trying to find more evidence of Claudius murdering his father now? Shouldn't he have made sure of this right after his first encounter with the ghost? So Hamlet, everything Hamlet is doing is him digging, trying to get more information. Remember the point of him acting crazy, okay? There's something about calling someone crazy that is really horrible, okay? If you're in an argument with somebody and somebody calls you crazy, they're dismissing, uh, they're dismissing you. They're dismissing everything that you have to say. If Hamlet does this to himself, people are going to loosen up around him and maybe say things that they shouldn't. Okay, so that's that's definitely part of it. Uh, so Hamlet's the whole time Hamlet is trying to get this evidence together, uh, and then the play within a play idea comes up, and that's like a whole other revelation of how to get how to get answers. So I think Hamlet's been trying to get answers the whole time. Um, <clears throat> Joseph asks one question I have about this act is why did he kill Polonius? I believed in him not being insane at this point. Until then, I don't know why he did that. So keep in mind, um, uh, Hamlet thinks that he's killing Claudius. Uh, in the book, 
it, it says that he, you know, that he stabbed him behind a curtain. Uh, in the book, Polonius is hiding behind a curtain, and Hamlet stabs him with the sword through the curtain before seeing who it is. In the version that you guys are watching, um, he shoots a gun. And right after that happens, the first words out of Hamlet's mouth are, is it the king? Is it the king? Uh, he thinks he's killed King Claudius while Claudius is spying on them. Uh, so, you know, so that's why. Um, what I also think is probably a little strange to you is the fact that he doesn't have a whole lot of emotion after he finds out it's Polonius. He just kind of feels like, ah, uh, this guy was such an idiot. And he says it, he calls him a fool too, uh, before he, he leaves with his body. Uh, so, again, you can use that for or against uh, your argument as to whether, you know, Hamlet is sane or insane. Uh, Brittany, one burning question I have is, is Hamlet ever going to kill Claudius? You're going to have to wait and see on that one. Uh, Terrell, when Hamlet saw the ghost of his father the second time, I'm confused. Why can't Gertrude see the ghost? Okay, so that's something that I talked about earlier on. Um, did Hamlet's father choose not to see her? Is the other appearance real and this one fake? We know the first one was real only because we get confirmation. And again, you know, not to rehash what I already said, but this might play into your argument of, as to whether or not Hamlet is sane or insane. So that's all the questions I got for Act 3. Uh, I hope that this helped you guys understand a little bit more, and I will see you all for Act 4. Mm -hmm.